In this lesson, we'll look at how to calculate general annuities. I've prepared two examples where the compounding period of the interest rate for the annuity is different than the frequency of the payment. So think of this as a continuation of our previous lesson where I showed you how to convert nominal rates into interest rates with different compounding periods. The first question asks, Michael deposits $100 at the start of each year into an account paying 5% compounded quarterly. I'll highlight that. How much is in the account immediately after the 12th payment? So, $100 is being put into an account every year. And the interest rate, on the other hand, is being compounded quarterly. So we need to convert the nominal rate, which is what I've highlighted, into a rate that is compounded annually. And in this particular case, that's called the effective annual rate. And we learned that to do this, we set up the following equation, where we write down in parentheses 1 plus that as a decimal, 0 0.05 divided by, it's being compounded quarterly, so we divide it by 4 and raise it to the power of 4. This number and that number need to be the same. On the right side, we'll be solving for i, which is our new interest rate, which is compounded annually. And that's represented as i. All we have to do is solve for this i. So I'll move that 1 over. I have 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4 raised to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to our brand new interest rate. It really helps to have a good calculator. So we open up our parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4 raise that to an exponent of 4 minus 1. And our interest rate is, you want to include as many decimal places as possible, at least up to 6. So we have i is equal to 0 0.050945. If you round this too early, you'll end up getting an answer that's wildly different than what you're supposed to get. Here I've prepared the formula that we need to use. We are looking for the accumulated value after 12 deposits, which translates to 12 years in this case. R represents the amount that we're depositing, which is 100. And focusing on there, we have 100 times, in the top position, I'll just move this underneath so I have more room, 1 plus our interest rate. Notice that this interest rate corresponds to the frequency of the deposits. So I don't need to divide it by anything. Minus 1. And that's being raised to the power of 12, because there are 12 deposits. And the interest rate gets written down underneath again. So now we will find the accumulated value after 12 deposits. I'll begin by evaluating this part, then multiplying whatever I get by 100. So in parentheses, and you also want to open up another set of parentheses. That way you can do it all in one shot on your calculator. So I've opened up the orange parenthesis, the purple, 1 plus 0 0.050945, close parenthesis, raise that to the power of 12, minus 1, close the orange parenthesis, divided by 0 0.050945. We end up getting 16, we multiply that by 100, and that gives us an accumulated value, including the interest, of $1,600. And now we can round this to two decimal places because we're working with dollars, four, five. Now, just out of curiosity, if I were to take 100 and multiply it by 12, I would get 1,200. And taking the difference of this and 1,200 gives you the amount that you wouldn't have earned otherwise without the interest being compounded. So let me just show you really quickly. If I subtract 1200 from this, that means we've earned a profit of $400.45 over the 12 years of doing this. In question two, Jude is making car payments of $350 per month for five years. If the interest rate on the loan is 10% annually, so that's important, what was the initial loan amount? 
So we are making monthly payments, but the interest is compounded annually at 10%. We need to convert that to monthly. So we have 1 plus 0 0.10. We're doing the same thing as we did before up here. And since this is annually, we don't divide that by anything or raise it to the power of anything other than 1. So just leave it like this. And that's equal to 1 plus our interest rate that we're looking for divided by 12, since we want the equivalent that's monthly compounded, raised to the power of 12. And now we solve for i. So to solve for i requires a bit of algebra. First, we have to get rid of this 12. And we can get rid of that exponent of 12 by raising both sides to an exponent of 1 over 12. Or you can take the 12th root of both sides. It's the same thing. And that will get rid of that 12. We'll bring that 1 over. And we'll multiply both sides by 12. That will get rid of this 12 at the bottom. OK, so once this is done, it should get easy. 12, and we end up getting an interest rate that is 0 0.09 5689. 5689. That should do it. OK, now, in case you haven't realized already, this will be the payment, 350, which is our R value. This will be happening for five years. So n will represent five times, well, we're making monthly payments. So there will, will be 60 payments of 350. And when all is said and done, we'll find out our present value, which is represented as PV. So we have PV is equal to 350, open bracket, 1 minus 1 plus the interest rate that we found. And it gets divided by 12. And we already discussed that n will be 60. So negative 60, according to the formula, over the interest rate divided by 12. And that gets written here. Before we use our calculator, make sure that you put parentheses at the top. That way you can do it all in one shot, and you don't run into any rounding errors. We end up with the following value, which gets multiplied now to 350. And that gives us 16,638 decimal 50 dollars. So that was the present value of the loan initially before Jude started making his payments. If you have any further questions or would like help on your homework, feel free to use our website at biology-forums.com. Hope to hear from you soon.